Would you turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4? Is this thing on? Yes, it is. But before we get to Ephesians chapter 4, I'd like to state probably the obvious. It's the goal of any public speaker that with his or her words to affect the audience's mind, uh, recalling on things you may uh, relate with to achieve a concept that you know we hope that the audience can can understand. Instead of using my thoughts and my memories this morning, I want to pose the invitation to you to recall your own emotions and your own feelings about the first time you witnessed the Lord's Supper. Maybe mom or dad or friend or sister you grew up with. Watching it happen. The emotions of what in the world is happening. My parents are taking a snack in the middle of, wor- in the middle of worship. What is this about? And then recalling the emotion of the first time you, with your Christian family, took those elements yourself. Because to you then, you had a personal tie to what those emblems were for you. The title for this Lord's Supper message is that time when. That time when. And I hope to go through three kind of categories. That time when I, that time when he, and that time when they. But first, Ephesians chapter 4. I'm going to start reading from verse 11. And he gave some as apostles, and some as prophets, and some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints for the work of service, to the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of of the Son of God, to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. As a result, we are no longer to be children, tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body, being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. Isn't it a blessing that all of us here right now had someone in our life to set the example by demonstration of what this Lord's Supper means. Regardless of if you came to the faith on your own, someone helped you to understand what all of this is about by demonstrating an example. That's the design that God set forth. The Lord's Supper is not something that the world sees as um, particularly normal, right? The, The bread to us Christians symbolizes a man's body. The the cup that we take symbolizes some man's blood. Now hold on a second, the world might say. 
That's, uh, that's a little different. But because of the serious example set forth by the faithful members before us who we grew up around, we know that it's way more than just a time to put something in your mouth. It's more than just a snack. It's more than just a taste. It's communing. That is, partaking together with Christ the emblems that represented him on the cross for us. That time when I took those emblems for the first time. I hope for you it was a, it was a really real moment. Because perhaps you had watched for so long other people do it. And now you get the chance to kind of, to kind of be a part of it. As you were. You're now, you were then, a part of something really special. That time when I. I invite you now to Luke chapter 22. That time when he instituted the Lord's Supper. I'm going to start reading from verse 14 and stop after I read verse 15. Because I feel like there's a, an attribute of Jesus that maybe sometimes is overlooked. When the hour had come, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Earnestly desired. That time when he said to his disciples, I earnestly desire to be here with you in this moment. Before I suffer. Reading on. For I say to you. I shall never again. Eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And when he had taken a cup. And given thanks he said take this. And share it among yourselves. For I say to you. I will not drink of the fruit of the vine. From now on until the kingdom of God comes. And when he had taken some bread. And given thanks he broke it. And gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup after they had eaten, saying, this cup, which is poured out for you, is the new covenant in my blood. Pausing there for a moment. First, that time when he earnestly desired to be in this moment with them. In that time when he blessed these two elements that take on a very real thing, that is the body and blood of Jesus, of himself, with his disciples. Reading on. In that time when Jesus said in verse 21, But behold... The hand of the one betraying me is with mine on the table. For indeed, the Son of Man is going as it has been determined. But woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to discuss among themselves which one of them it might be who was going to, uh, to do this thing. That time when Jesus warned his disciples of a betrayer. 
of a one who was trying to satisfy selfish intent. And then it gets to verse 24. That time when they, after had just been warned of the man who was trying to satisfy selfish intent, began to dispute among themselves as to which one of them was regarded to be the greatest. After had just been warned of a man who was going to do one of the most selfish things ever regarded in human history. For how many pieces, how many pieces of silver was it? 30? Christ's body to him was worth 30. And here, after just being warned, the rest of them are arguing about which disciple is holding a specific placeholder in the group. That time when I, the time when he, and that time when they. With all of these um, references to past memories in Scripture, it's the goal to arrive at reflection during this time. Where do I stand? when we approach this act of worship. Where have I stood? We all hope that as we approach these things, those around us are doing so not out of routine, absent-mindedly. We hope that those around us who are partaking of these very special emblems with us are doing so in one spirit. Together as a family. If we're granted next week Do you know what we'll do again? This right here. Acts chapter 20 and verse 7 lays the example of why we do what we do when we do it. And it is a blessing. I hope as we're all reflecting on this time, it is a blessing to just be here and have the opportunity to partake of the bread and the cup. As the taste of the bread is kind of um, melting on your tongue, and as that um, kind of tangy taste is rolling down your throat, I invite you to remember and perhaps meditate on all of that being a similar and shared experience of other faithful Christians for thousands of years. And we too get that opportunity to remember what all of this is about. Thank you. Let us pray. Father, we come before your throne in awe, in awe of your love for us that despite being separated from you by our sins, by my sins, that your love was able to overcome that, look past that, that you willingly sent your son to this earth 
took him from a place on high and sent him to live here among us to be that perfect sacrifice for us so that we can have atonement for our sins. Father, it's a love that is seen nowhere, nowhere else. And we are thankful for that. Father, we ask that you bless the bread which is in front of us that represents your son's body that hung on the cross for us. We know that there are so many inconsequential things in life that can occupy our minds and distract us. We ask that you help us to push those out of our minds, to truly be present in this moment, to be present as we remember your son's death, to commune with one another, Father. And we ask this all in your son's name. Amen. Father, we again come before you with the fruit of the vine before us, which represents your son's blood that was shed on the cross willingly. Father, the weight of that sacrifice is not lost on us. We understand that there's nothing that we could do of our own merit, that we can only do this through your son Christ to come before you. Father, it is, it is such a blessing that we have that hope. Father, as we look at ourselves, as we examine ourselves, as we remember your son's life, his death, his resurrection, the way he interacts in our lives today, Father, in this moment, we ask that you would help us to continue to reflect on these things throughout the week, that we would not just do so now, but every day we would remember that sacrifice, that we would live our lives in a way that's worthy of that sacrifice. That others may look at us and know that we have been set apart, that we truly are a special people. Yes, that all in your son's name. Amen. <clears throat> 